Hi, my name is Stephen Taddy. Uh, we're at my studio in New York City at 117 East 39th Street. I am a sculpture conservator, one of uh, a handful of people in this country that do that. Um, it's a sort of a rare breed and uh, we specialize in sculpture conservation of all types and mediums. This studio has been in the family for over 50 years. My dad, who is Alexander Taddy and is 90 years old, um, has been working out of this space for over 50 years. He studied architecture as a, as a college student, but then went away to the, uh, to the war, World War I, and when he came back, he didn't have the luxury of finishing off his studies and had to work. Um, he started working at the Leonard Baskey Foundry as an apprentice, and later on, he actually took the foundry over and bought it and became uh, a bronze foundry man and a professional plastic uh, mold maker. Um, and he's one of the last people in this country that knows how to do casting um, the traditional way, which with Roman joints and what have you. That's sort of an art that's been lost. My dad spent lots of time helping many, many artists from Nevelson to Noguchi to Paul Manship, Lovett Lorsky, uh, Anna Hyatt Huntington, and they all were in this space right here where we're sitting and, uh, you know, drinking coffee or wine with my dad over the years. Working alongside my dad and also my uncle, who's no longer with us, has been very interesting and, 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 and a lot of fun. My uncle was a sculptor by right, and so he had a very artistic side to him. And my dad was actually trained as an architect, so he, he kind of had that more analytical side. So maybe those two components, like I just described to you, sort of came together in the shop, and I, I sort of fall somewhere in the middle, or, or my experience, I had both sides of it on either side of me. And I think the combination is really what, what you need in this business. The history of, of the Taddy name and, and sculpture and conservation goes back to the Renaissance. Um, there was a Renaissance sculptor named Jacopo Tatti whose um, working name was Il Sansovino, and he took that name Sansovino from his master, Andrea Sansovino. But Sansovino was a very competent sculptor. For a long time, he was the chief architect and in Venice. I spent my junior year abroad in Rome, as my junior year of college abroad in Rome, and I sort of got hooked on and addicted to the lifestyle and, and living there. So after I graduated college, I enrolled in a program in Florence and studying conservation, restoration, and I fell in love with it from the first day. My focus, the focus of the studies in Italy, actually was a painting conservation program, but I quickly found that I liked three-dimensional objects and I could do the studio part of the course, which is four hours a day at the Uffizi with the sculpture conservator there. So instead of doing painting conservation in the lab, I worked at the Uffizi and just took the same uh, study courses with the other students. Um, I began my conservation career working for the Smithsonian Institution. I actually worked for three different museums, but the longest stay was at the Hirshhorn Museum and Sculpture Garden. Actually, I was there when they opened, which was a very exciting thing to be part of the opening of a brand new museum and I got the opportunity to work on a lot of sculptures that had never been worked on before because they were coming out of a private collection. Um, and I also got the opportunity to develop a lot of the techniques that I later on took, took out to work um, privately. The first large, really large project that I undertook was with the city of Baltimore, CHAP, the Commission for Historic and Architectural Preservation, and that was in the early 80s, I think 1981, we, we started on a three-year project to restore all of the uh, outdoor monuments that were under the city's uh, domain, and that took us three seasons, and it was a very big contract, but it was a really great contract because it, it launched me on uh, my career for working on outdoor bronzes, which is probably constitutes about half of the work that I do today. Working on the Statue of Liberty came shortly after the Baltimore Project, and that was a wonderful experience. Um, the job wasn't that large in scope, but it was an opportunity to, to go out to the Statue of Liberty with my father and, and my uncle, who's no longer with us, and just to, uh, as a team, to, to um, experience the Statue of Liberty, going up on the scaffolding, looking out over the harbor. And basically, we would take the boat out every day with all of these, these workers and laborers. It felt almost like an the immigrants were coming back to the Statue of Liberty. It was really some experience. Well, I was working at the Guggenheim in New York and um, I started working with Steve. The first thing we did was uh, all those pieces, we had a bunch of pieces in a park in Newark, and then we did the Statue of Liberty, which was way cool. Um, that was, you know, you climb all the way up the scaffold 
and uh, stand on her face and, you know, just color out the patches. It was like incredible and it was super windy and the piece was moving back and forth like this. And there's all these like Rastafarian guys knocking on the copper sheeting from the inside. And the erector said, oh, it was so it was really incredible. We did the face. There were two things. There was part of a curl behind her ear and on the face where they had the uh, the copper had rotted through, and we placed the panels and covered and colored them out. A great art conservator, I think, has to first of all love what he does and have a real passion for the art and the different styles. But he also has to have an inquisitive sort of scientific side to him also. So it's it's a it's a strange combination of artistic traits and also, uh, like I said, a very analytical uh, type of mind. I could not imagine living and not doing it at all. I, I love it. I, I, like I said, when I started in Florence studying it, I loved it from the first day and I, I really have not left the ground running since. So I, I just enjoy the challenge of, of every piece that comes in and trying to solve the problem at hand and, and quite frankly every everything we work on is different so as, as you look around the studio you'll see all different materials all different mediums with all different problems.